famously I lost with Purdue. Largest upset in the history of the NCAA tournament. Obviously, that's not the first time that I've, I've bet a bridge jumper before, but I did it again. I got to tell you, Patrick, this was the opposite. This is Sharp Money with Patrick Maher on VSIN, the sports betting network. What we love about Steve Fezzik and the betting space is lucky to have him because he's a showman. He is. He's a bit of a lightning rod, and he has fun with it, Fezzik Sports on Twitter. And so we should back up to last week. Maybe before we do that, we should back up. You're comfortable talking about all of this, and you can help us with the math. But we called it the bridge jump last year with Purdue. And then you posted last week, Villanova, of course, DePaul. You got the win. I think you were minus 4,000 there. Just walk us through your thought process with the big favorites. Yeah, so bottom line is history has shown if you have a 24-point favorite, they win 98 to 99% of the time. All right, so what, what does that equate to? That equates to right around a minus 5,000 odds. So if you can bet those teams at less than minus 5,000, you have an overlay. And famously, I lost with Purdue in the tournament last year. Largest upset in the history of the NCAA tournament. Hey, I, I can pick them, right? Obviously, that's not the first time that I've, I've bet a bridge jumper before, but I did it again, Villanova against DePaul. I got to tell you, Patrick, this was the opposite of Purdue. I really didn't like Purdue. I actually liked Villanova against DePaul. DePaul had 18 losses against teams that weren't Georgetown. Correction, 18 embarrassing losses in conference. Terrible team, two close losses to Georgetown, and 18 blowout losses. And I said, there is no way Villanova, needing the game like blood on the bubble, is going to take this game lightly. And then Nova was just terrible. DePaul was awful. It was just an awful game. Both teams should have lost. And... I was faced with, uh, I had a minus 4,000 bet on a team that was the underdog to win the game, but they somehow managed to get there, <laughs> to which I concluded, well, no reason not to, like, go crazy now. And so I've already invested in Houston and Connecticut to win their games outright at minus 4,000 and minus 2,500. And frankly, I think they're both, like, 99% to win their games. So I, th- I think they're outstanding investments. But to everyone who's listening, um, for those who think I'm a dumbo, you can just go to go to the next channel on the radio dial. And for those who respect me, you know what? Don't go out there and be like laying some stupid number like minus 8,000. And don't go be betting more than 5% of your bankroll. The maximum you should be bet risk on any bet is 5% of your sports betting bankroll. When you lay the 4,000, first off, you should take us through the emotion. You probably weren't even watching the games, to be fair. You got the big three late. Ended up a winner there. Um, when you laid the 4,000, what would you say the detractors, what are the biggest pushbacks you get on laying a price like that? Got to be a freaking idiot to bet a, a ton to make nothing. So even if you win, you don't make anything. So what are you, what are you doing, Steve? Um, to which I would respond, the no overtime. Famously, I bet that in almost every Super Bowl since the early 90s. I've lost two of them. Um, and... It's 50, it, but there's 58 Super Bowls, you're 56 and two. Guess what? The two is going to happen. You are going to lose some, but if you're laying minus 1,000, you're going to get the better of it. A Super Bowl doesn't have a 10% chance of going into overtime if you have an overlay like that. And guess what? It's a lot easier to find overlays on the minus side because what is the betting public? What do people want to do? You look out in the casino, people are playing for jackpots. They're looking to bet a toothpick to win the lumber yard. Not the opposite. So because of that, invariably, we talk about this with Super Bowl props, some of the best value propositions are the ones where you lay extra vig. This has even happened in baseball, Patrick. 20 years ago, it used to be all the value was taking the dogs. Now, all things being equal, it used to be a cardinal rule. Don't lay more than minus 160 in MLB. I'd make the case, all things being equal, if I'm playing on an exchange, so it's like minus 160 plus 158. I have to play one or the other. I want the minus 160. Those do better than the plus 158s um, because betters are still looking, you know, typically looking to, to, to cash with the dogs. Promise I'm not trying to trap you here. Did you discuss openly what you laid on Villanova laying the 4,000? What do you mean by openly? I don't know what that. Did you talk about the amount? Uh, I did. I, 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 Todd Dewey did a, a, a uh, article in the Review Journal. And so no secret, I, ha- I had Bill Crackman. Uh, the Crackman put it down for me. So he can corroborate, you know, that he won $1,000 for me. Okay. <laughs> there you go. Hey, look, Fezzik, like I said, he's a showman. He knows what he's doing. He's a math guy, too. So uh, we love having Steve on the show. The tournament itself when you just think of an overview, somebody's just getting into it, they're betting, they're not just filling out a bracket, some tips, some pointers betting the tournament. 
Bet less. Whenever you think you should be playing on these games, bet less. The tournament is not an easy thing to beat. And best evidence I can give, um, like the folks over at South Point, March Madness Sweet 16, they deal minus 105 on every game. And they don't deal minus 105 pricing. What does that mean? I mean, if you're dealing minus 105 and you got one side minus 109 and the other side minus 101, that's difficult to beat. If you got both sides at minus 105, that's a lot easier to beat, and they're still going to make money. Know why? Because these games are so analyzed and overanalyzed, and all the sharpest people there, 10 times smarter than me and are fully focused, are going to tell you why BYU minus 7.5 was a great bet. $40 fine, pass post. And Howard is an underdog. $80 fine, massive pass post, wrong team favored. You get the idea. The numbers that are wrong are going to get taken out immediately, and then it's Monday. The numbers just came up. People are like, they're just opening up. No, you're, it's already too late on, on a lot of these bets where the really good bets have already gotten obliterated and sandblasted into place. I have a question, Steve. What about if someone bets what they feel is a good play they wake up Monday morning and the line moves against them. Should they be so fearful to get off of it or just chalk it up to, hey, there's, this could be one of like the 46% or 50, whatever it is, 48% that that person's wrong, the sharp community's wrong? Yeah, this, exactly. Well, the, you know, the sharp community, I would argue, it's, you're right. They're only going to cash like 54% of their bets. And so that means they're going to get 46% wrong. But that's a little inaccurate because just random variance is going to create sure. like one third of the time. Like if you play in a poker tournament, anyone who plays in a poker tournament knows that as sure as the sun's going to come up tomorrow, your, um, your ace queen is going to lose to king queen all in um, again and again and again. It's a 70 percent favorite. It's just inevitable if you have three um, races like that. You, you start, we, we, we joke about it. Oh, ace queen against king queen, coin flip. You know, it just feels that way. And so the same thing, you can have the right side and it can go down in flames. It doesn't, it, 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 just with random variants. But um, if you do like, let's say you like Duquesne, all right? And you think Duquesne's undervalued. They've been undervalued for weeks now. And you like Duquesne at 7.5 and 8 against BYU. And now it lines up to 9.5. Well, I think it, it would rarely be wrong to invest in Duquesne. If you like them already, plus 8, I think you've got to go ahead and bet them. There's no hurry necessarily. I don't think we'll see a plus 10. But um, that's a line that steamed early this morning. It, it got moved from 7.5 to 8, and then this morning it got moved again to 8.5 and, and then all the way to 9.5. And, and in general, 8 of clubs method betting, anyone who hasn't followed me, the 8 of clubs method, write down the openers, then write down what the closers are going to be or what the lines are at any point in time. And if you see a major line move, do not bet the team that got the money. If you have to bet the game, fade the line move and bet the other side. You will do better I'm not sure you're going to win doing that strategy, but you'll, you'll pick more than 50%. Maybe you'll pick 51.8%, maybe 52.5% uh, by fading line move. We're going to come back with the South. You said you want to selectively play first half unders and why it won't work so well this year in the tournament. Yes, because the, the word is out. Um, everyone is talking about these first half unders. They talked about how the ball apparently is different in the tournament. You know, the, the, the diameter of the ball, I can't believe this, is like slightly different as, as is the, um, uh, you know, the make and model of it. So if you're used to driving a Ferrari and now you've got to play with a Ford Fusion or vice versa, you, um, you might have some trouble. So because of that, first half unders have been dynamite. Also makes sense. Really important game. Teams are tight. Unknown ven um, uh, new venues, uh, half-filled stadiums, oftentimes early in the day. And because of that, first half unders, let me see, this is uh, from Jared Smith, 187, 141, and 6. That is one hell of a trend. Um, but as soon as everyone starts talking about a trend, oftentimes it, it becomes less effective. Because remember, the public likes to bet first half overs. That's part of the reason this has done so well, is it wouldn't be unusual you'd get an extra point, half point or point to the good, playing the unders. I doubt that happens this year. The bridge jumper is here, and he looks better than ever. How about that? He's jumping off bridges, and he's coming back skinnier with a tan. Steve Fezzik, professional better. Pregame.com at Fezzik Sports. Two Zs and a K. When we come back, we've got the South region, and we're going to go Midwest game by game. 